Hi there, welcome to my channel, A Country Life. I'm Jennifer. I don't have a written meal plan right now, which really is not a problem. I've been doing this homemaker gig since 1996, and so I have a few years under my belt. Uh, I've done hundreds of meal plans uh, where I do it for a week or I do it for just an event or I meal plan for an entire month. Um, and sometimes I just wing it, and today is one of those days. I'm just digging around in my freezer. I'm going to pull out a beef sirloin tip roast, as well as some venison mini roasts, which are cut from the back strap. I'm going to head down to my basement chest freezer, dig around in there, pull out some frozen corn. I will get the venison steak going on a quick th thaw. I'm just going to put that in some hot water. It's no big deal to put it in hot water. It's not going to be in the hot water for much longer than 30 minutes while I mix together my desserts. Some rhubarb. I have some apple slices here and get that taken back upstairs so I can just kind of start in on what I'm going to do. Like I said, I have no meal plan and I didn't even head out to the freezers knowing what I was looking for. I was just going to grab whatever and I know that everything in my freezer is something that I can, it's an ingredient that I can turn into something. It seems pretty wise to get started in on the desserts because those are going to have to go into the oven. Some of the other things I'm just going to allow to thaw and just use them uh, throughout the week here. What you making? As I was pulling out the apples, I was thinking apple crisp. I always have butter and flour and sugar and cinnamon on hand and salt. And so I can make apple crisp. Super easy recipe. This is my grandma's recipe, how she made it. Probably, she probably started making it like this in the beginning of her marriage. <laughs> and that was a long, long time ago. They probably got married in 1949. Uh, that would be my best guess. I'm going to soften the butter and then add flour and sugar to that, mix that all up. The recipe is on page 54 in cookbook one, uh, which does start with four cups of sliced apples. I've made this so many times and it's a very forgiving recipe. My package of apples says it has six cups of apples. I'm just going to increase each of the ingredients by just a smidge, topping onto the apples, and then get that into a 350 degree oven for about 40 minutes. You can serve this warm with whipped cream, cool, whip. Ice cream is really good. You can serve it cooled at room temperature, cold. It is delicious any way you slice it. I guess we don't slice this, but it's good any way you serve it. I also want to do something with rhubarb. My first thought was maybe to do some muffins or something, and then I thought, you know, let's just do another dessert. I have not done rhubarb custard dairy bar, which is also on page 54 in cookbook number one. I haven't made this in a while. And I wonder if I asked Warren his favorite dessert, if this would be the one that he would pick. This definitely is going to rank in the top three of his favorite desserts. So just like the apple crisp, I'm going to rub together or uh, cut together butter and flour and sugar. I'm going to get that pressed into an ungreased 9 by 13 pan. <coughs> and then I need to make the custard. Three eggs, some sugar, flour, salt, and you can use heavy cream, 2% milk, whole milk. I just used a mix here today of heavy cream and whole milk. Get that all mixed or, you know, mixed up really well. And I'm going to add in my frozen rhubarb.
I did a quick thaw on both the apples and the and the rhubarb. I just ran it under hot water just until I could break apart the fruit so that I could kind of spread it out. For the apples, I ran it under I ran those under hot water just until I could break them up enough to kind of spread some chunks out into my baking dish. And for the rhubarb, I, I did the same thing. I just ran it under the hot water until I could break it up so that I, I knew that when I put it in with the custard mix that I could just kind of, you know, pound on it a little bit and break that up. It's totally fine starting with frozen food. <laughs> you know, because then it would be something to look forward to. I have a little bit of waiting time here with the apple crisp in the oven before I can put the crust of the rhubarb custard dairy bar into the oven. I went over to the sink to check on my venison steaks and they were just thawed enough that I could start um, kind of prying them apart. Some of the steaks ripped and that's okay. I just needed them to a point where I could a actually just kind of pull them apart. Icy is just fine. And I'm going to make a marinade here. This is also in cookbook number one on page 26. It's summer steak kebabs. We're not going to make kebabs, but I will uh, use this marinade. It's oil, soy sauce, honey, vinegar, ginger, garlic powder. I use some pepper on the meat and then some seasoned meat tenderizer. Get that all mixed up, pour it over the steak. And then, you know, I'm just kind of pushing each steak down into the marinade. steak will continue to thaw in the refrigerator today in the marinade and then about a half an hour before I'd like Warren to grill these on the Blackstone we'll take them out of the refrigerator I will pour off the marinade and then just kind of let them come up to almost room temperature uh, before putting them onto the grill they just sear nicer if they start room temperature rather than icy cold that's way better <laughs> crisp is out of the oven. The house smells amazing. There is just something about that warm apple oh, and cinnamon. It's just such a good smell. All right, I put in the crust for the rhubarb custard dairy bar. That only has to go for 10 minutes. Once that comes out, I will pour the custard mix over top and then that'll have to go in the oven for, I believe, 40 minutes. No, 50 minutes. And here's the recipe. There we go, that's the recipe there for the rhubarb custard dairy bar. Feel free to screenshot that if you'd like. And then here is the recipe for the apple crisp. Again, feel free to screenshot that. I also always have the links in the description box below if you'd like to purchase a cookbook. So I have volume one and volume two. I keep those in stock all the time so that um, they're available for sale. So if you're interested in buying that, you can just check it out in the description box below. I also should mention that I do have a weekly newsletter, so my daughter helps me out with that a lot. And um, there's just little, sometimes it's just kind of behind the scenes of what sort of was important to us that week, what we were doing. Sometimes we'll share a, uh, like a meal plan. Sometimes she shares a recipe of something that she made for her family that they all really liked. Uh, what else do we do? We just it, it, it could be anything. It only comes out once a week. We always aim for Mondays, but we're both, we're both busy. And sometimes the newsletter is not the thing that always comes to the top of the list. You know, you, you guys know what I mean by that, right? There's, you always have a list of things going. It's a list of, you know, it just like the list never ends, right? You just, you, one thing gets marked off and you just add something else to it. But sometimes you have to kind of prioritize that list and certain things just always seem to bump to the top and certain things always bump to the bottom. And Sometimes that happens with the newsletter. So we don't always get it out on Mondays, but only once a week. We never send more than once a week. 
And if you want to sign up for the newsletter, that link is also in the description box below. Rhubarb custard dairy bar is out of the oven now. That was 50 minutes. It looks absolutely beautiful. This has to cool completely before putting the topping on. When that's completely cool, I will make a topping that has cream cheese, sugar, vanilla, and Cool Whip. And if you like the topping really thick, if you want like a really thick topping, feel free to double the recipe. So that would be eight ounces of cream cheese, a half cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, and 16 ounces of Cool Whip. But the topping we always thought was really thick and almost made it a little too sweet. We like that tartness that the rhubarb brings to it. And so I cut the recipe in half and we just put um, a half a half recipe layer on top. All right, so if you want it sweeter, go for it. If you, know, if you want that thicker topping, go for it, double it up. I, I have to let this cool and the apple crisp is just about, oh, it's just perfect. Just a teeny bit warm right now. It's so great having meat thawed in the refrigerator ready to go. I love it when I have weeks that I do that. It just makes thinking of what I'm going to do for supper that night so much easier. So here we have a beef roast. This is a uh, just a little over two pound sirloin tip roast. I'm putting it into my instant pot with a cup of water and a, almost a tablespoon of um, better than bouillon beef. It's actually roasted beef. I'm going to get that set for 60 minutes on high pressure and let it do its thing. I'm gonna go down to the basement here and grab out some of my uh, pre-baked. I'm also gonna grab one quart of green beans. Freezer rolls, these are the butter knots I made probably a month ago. I can link that video below if you wanna see how I put those uh, dinner rolls together. It is so nice also having those because I can take them out from frozen 
pop them into the oven and within 13 or 15 minutes we have fresh hot dinner rolls ready for the table. One, it was very inexpensive and two, it's just ingredients that I know. I know exactly the ingredients that are in those dinner rolls. Joe, take take one of these pieces here, honey. Let's take a fork. How many can we have? Dinner rolls, two. No gravy. No gravy. Oh, no yes. gravy. Joe, you're gonna need some gravy. You know what? I probably should have tasted the gravy. <laughs> gravy, yeah, right now. Yes, it is. Another night where it was really nice to have meat already thawed. Warren wrapped these in bacon, and um, I think you seasoned them up or something, right? I did. I used uh, steak seasoning on them. Okay, that one that was from like Smith, mm -hmm. Smith Brothers? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a really good one. And he did these on the Blackstone, and he just made it all happen. Behind the scenes, in a different video here, I am actually working on... Um, freezer meal prep and so I was in the kitchen a lot so anyway today he was like I'll make the black I'll make the whatever these are mini roasts and then he put together some such a dad meal yep. <laughs> pork and beans applesauce and hash browns so I know you love it I know you do Joe 